Here we go. Interhepatic cholestasis. Got itch? What I mean by that is, are you pregnant and itchy, especially on the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet? Are you in your third trimester of pregnancy? Then you may have something called ICP. Have you ever heard of ICP? And I don't mean intracranial pressure. I'm talking about interhepatic cholestasis of pregnancy, or also known as cholestasis of pregnancy. So what is interhepatic cholestasis of pregnancy or ICP? First, let's put some understanding to the terms. Intra refers to within or inside. Hepatic refers to the liver. Choli refers to bile or bile ducts. Stasis refers to stopping or stoppage of flow. And pregnancy would refer to, well, pregnancy. So intrahepatic cholestasis would describe a condition where bile, which is a fluid that helps in the digestion process and is released from cells within the liver, is then stored in the gallbladder, becomes obstructed and builds up in the liver, which can impair the function of the liver. Bile acids occur as a part of a normal breakdown of cholesterol within the liver. It is thought that as bile acids increase in the liver, then they enter the circulation through the bloodstream. And these bile acids then cause the itching for the mother. But these can also affect the baby. It is a condition of pregnancy that is not quite understood why it actually occurs, but it is thought to occur due to elevated estrogen levels associated with pregnancy. As pregnancy progresses, estrogen levels become increasingly elevated, and it is this elevation of estrogen that results in ICP. ICP is not very common, but it is very problematic. The reason I made this video is to bring awareness to this disorder of pregnancy that many people, especially pregnant women, may not be aware of. So if it is not very common, why even talk about it? Because it can be very serious and cause harm to the unborn baby. The more it is known about, the more you know about it, the better. And if not for you, maybe you have a sister, a friend, a cousin, an aunt, or a neighbor, or even a stranger talking about this itching they have and them being pregnant. You will now know more about it and you can share this information with them so that they can let their doctor know and hopefully save their baby. Real quick, my name is Nurse Master Charlie. Welcome to my YouTube channel and my nursing channel. I am a registered nurse and on my channel I talk about and share about nursing, nursing school related topics and tips, as well as health related topics, tips, and information. Now, back to ICP. Although ICP is not as well known as other disorders of pregnancy, such as preeclampsia or HELP syndrome, it does have its own special day. June 10th is designated ICP Awareness Day, which is a movement to bring awareness to this disorder of pregnancy. Statistically, in the United States, ICP affects approximately less than 1% of pregnant women. That's about one to two women in 1,000. In pregnant women of Latin descent, statistics are greater, whereas approximately 5% of pregnancies are affected, or about five out of every 100 women. ICP is most common during the third trimester, but for some women, itching can begin to occur in the second trimester of pregnancy. Remember I mentioned that it is thought to occur due to elevated estrogen levels in pregnancy. So as pregnancy progresses from trimester to trimester, estrogen levels become increasingly elevated. And this would be the reason for ICP to occur in the third trimester. It is thought that this elevation of estrogen is one of the reasons ICP occurs. And for unknown reasons, it is actually more common in the winter months. Signs and symptoms of ICP. The most common symptom of ICP is itching from mild to severe and may occur all over your body, but most commonly begins to occur starting on the palms of the hands and the soles or the bottoms of the feet. The itching may be more increased and more severe at night, which may make resting and sleeping difficult. I'd like to mention about something called PUPP, P-U-P-P-P, -P -P, which can also occur in pregnancy and also in the third trimester and also causes, you guessed it, itching. PUP, which is an abbreviation for puritic urticarial papules and plaques of pregnancy, is basically a condition that presents with rash-like patches or bumps that can occur all over the body, but more specifically in between stretch marks on the belly. Although PUP is itchy, irritating, and uncomfortable, it is not dangerous to the mother or the baby, and the cure is delivery. For more about PUP, please see my video on PUP. So back to ICP. Other signs and symptoms of ICP include right upper stomach area pain, also known as the right upper quadrant, which is actually where the liver is located. Nausea, which a pregnant woman may have due to the pregnancy itself. However, normal pregnancy nausea and vomiting should decrease after the first trimester. Decreased or no appetite. Fatigue, malaise, which fatigue may be normal due to pregnancy. Jaundice or yellow colored eyes and skin. Dark colored urine, pale colored stool or feces. So how is ICP diagnosed? To diagnose ICP, your doctor will take your complaints of itching into consideration and order blood tests to be performed to check the level of bile acids in your blood. 
The clinical diagnosis of ICP is based on the symptoms of itching and an elevated total bile acid of 10 micromoles per liter or greater. Bile acid levels should also be monitored closely even after a diagnosis as levels may be progressive and also increase. Mild cases of ICP have bile acids below 40 micromoles per liter. Severe cases of ICP have bile acids above 40 micromoles per liter. Bile acids greater than 100 are more probable to result in pregnancy-related complications, which I will mention in a minute. Another type of test called a fractionated bile acid test, which measures specific bile acids and also can be used to diagnose ICP with lower levels than that of a regular bile acid test. Also LFTs or liver function tests, specifically alanine aminotransferase or ALT, which is the most sensitive in ICP, and aspartate aminotransferase or AST can be used to assist in the diagnosing of ICP but are not used definitively. Normal LFT results do not rule out ICP, but LFTs are elevated in approximately 60% of people with ICP. Now keep in mind that symptoms can present two to four weeks before lab work or blood work shows any elevation in bile acids. Follow-up testing may be needed every two weeks as long as symptoms persist to actually determine the level of bile acids. Also, the intensity of itching does not correlate to the severity of ICP or levels of bile acids present in the blood. To make things worse, results can take up to three to 10 days. One thing to mention, it is recommended that treatment with medications should not be initiated until a definitive answer or diagnosis is made as medications are made to decrease the bile acids in the blood, which could make bile acids look lower than they really are. If it is you feeling the itching, advocate for yourself. It is not in your head. If you are having signs and symptoms, you are the only one who knows how you feel, and it is you that is instrumental in saving your baby's life. Risk factors. Some factors that may increase the risk of developing cholestasis of pregnancy include ICP in a previous pregnancy, a family history of cholestasis of pregnancy, history of liver damage or disease, being pregnant with multiple babies, for example, twins, having a special gene mutation of the ABCB11 or ABCB4 gene, which then does not let the body produce and process bile normally. Complications of ICP, preterm delivery before 37 weeks, RDS or respiratory distress syndrome, usually due to immature lungs due to preterm delivery, which should not let babies breathe normally. Meconium aspiration. This is when a baby breathes in amniotic fluid mixed with feces or stool. Fetal distress. This can occur when a baby does not get enough oxygen when inside the mother. And ultimately, stillbirth. Not to scare those of you watching this, but it seems the higher the level of bile acids, the higher the risk of a baby dying. Some studies show that although some fetal deaths can occur before 37 weeks at 34, 35 weeks, most occur at 37 weeks or greater, depending on the level of bile acids with still birth rates being as high as 10 to 50% in mothers with ICP. That is why it is so important to know about ICP and share about it. Whether it's this video or some other video about ICP, get the word out. One last possible complication, and this one is for the mother, ICP can cause postpartum hemorrhage to occur, which is excessive bleeding after delivery. Treatment. How is ICP treated? ICP symptom management of itching is treated with medications such as ursodiol, which helps lower the amount of bile acids in the blood, thus decreasing the itching. Ursodiol is a commonly prescribed medication for ICP, and although it is beneficial for the treatment of a mother's symptoms, it does not help the baby. Anti-itch creams or lotions or antihistamines are not recommended as they may mask symptoms and may not actually provide any relief from the itching. Also, lukewarm bath soaks may help with the symptoms of itching, but do not cure ICP. Prior to a delivery, a doctor may monitor the mother and the baby more frequently with non-stress testing. The treatment and cure for ICP is delivery of the baby. Depending on a mother's symptoms, lab values, and baby's overall health, early induction or cesarean section may be done to prevent complications. And like I said, the cure for ICP and ultimately for the mother's itching is delivery of the baby, which will then decrease estrogen levels. Postpartum or after delivery, and generally after a few days, the itching should stop. Your provider may recommend follow-up liver tests to ensure the liver is functioning properly. FYI, if a woman has ICP in a pregnancy, there is a 45-70% to 70 chance of it happening again in subsequent pregnancies. Now if you come out of this video with one thing, let it be this. Don't ignore the itch. Don't ignore the itch. Don't ignore the itch. So if you found value in this video and learned a little something about intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy or ICP, please be sure to give this video a like and please be sure to share this with all the women you know who are pregnant or are desiring to become pregnant. Because the more who know about this, the better.
If you are interested in health information and nursing related content like this, I'd like to invite you to subscribe and be part of my nursing channel. Also, hit the notification bell so you can be made aware of when I make new videos. Please be sure to check out my many other nursing topic related videos. And if you did not know, I am a nurse and a musician. And one form of education I create is educational music. You can find my nursing and health related educational music lyric videos here on YouTube. And you can also find my songs on almost all music streaming platforms, such as Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, Pandora, etc. to take my nursing educational music on the go so you can learn while you listen to music. Also, be sure to check out my nursing blog on my website, www.nursemastercharlie.com. I'll also leave links in the description. So until the next video, I'm Nurse Master Charlie. Go save lives and make a difference in someone's life. God bless and goodbye. So if you want to learn about another itchy disorder of pregnancy, which comes with the rash called PUP, which I mentioned earlier, click this video here.